In this screencast, we are going to look at the marginal utility and the utility maximizing rule. During this screencast, we're going to define diminishing marginal utility. We're going to look at the relationship between diminishing marginal utility and the demand curve. And then we're going to solve for the utility maximizing rule and also for the optimal consumption rule. So we've already talked about diminishing marginal utility. And if you remember, this is where the personal satisfaction decreases with each additional unit. When you're looking here at, this is from module 51, this is the first figure, you have this chart over here and it's giving you the quantity being consumed and the total utilities. In order to um, figure out the marginal, you're looking at the change in total utility divided by the change in quantity. And so in going from consuming zero of these clams to um, one clam, you have a total utility that changes from zero to 15. So the marginal utility of the first unit is 15. For the second unit, you're going from a total utility of 15 to 28. So the marginal utility of the second unit is 13. So over here, you have the total utilities. But remember, economists don't make decisions with total. They look at the marginal so they can figure out the exact unit that they would consume. And so that is what is being plotted here, the 15 and the 13, and you continue to go with it. And each one decreases the utility as the output increases. This marginal utility curve is the same thing as the demand curve. Remember, we've looked at why the demand curve looks like it does, the income effect, the substitution effect, and diminishing marginal utility. And what we said is that a rational consumer will not purchase something where the marginal utility is less than the price. But we don't usually just buy one thing at a time. And so we need to go beyond just marginal utility equals price in order to figure out how much somebody is going to buy of something. So if you're looking at consuming two products at the same time, you use the formula here of marginal utility per dollar of X needs to equal the marginal utility per dollar of Y. So when you have these ratios equaling one another, that will maximize the personal satisfaction of the person buying it. When you're confronted with these types of problems, you're going to be told the price of the good that it's being sold at. You'll be given the quantities and the total utilities. Down here you have this budget constraint. And with the budget constraint, what this is saying is the amount that a person's income is. And one of the rules is that you always have to spend all of your income. So not only do you need to make sure the ratios equal one another, but you also have to make sure then that the quantities that they're buying at these prices will equal the budget constraint, which in this case is $13. So when you're given a problem like this, the first thing that you should do is you should create a table to be able to fill in these numbers because you're going to need them to be able to answer the questions. And so it's better to have those before you have to go and attack the multiple choice problems. So the best thing to do right now would be to pause the screencast and to fill in the chart so that way you can um, look at and compare the marginal utilities per dollar. And again, remember, in order to solve for marginal utility, you look at the change in total utility at each of the units. So in looking here at this table, we can see that for good X, the marginal utility of the first unit is 15 because it went from 0 to 15. The marginal utility of the second unit is 10 because it went from 15 to 25. And for the third unit, it is 6 because it went from 25 to 31. In order to figure out the marginal utility per dollar, I need to take each of these marginal utilities and divide them by the $3. And that's where I'm coming up with these numbers here, 5 and $3.33 and 2 and 1. And then over here, you have the marginal utilities for good Y and the marginal utility per dollar. So the first thing to do is to look at this formula here for the marginal utility per dollar in order to figure out which of the ratios equal another. What I like to do is I like to look at the highest marginal utility per dollar in these charts and then look and see if anything matches. So the highest one here is 16, and I'm not seeing anything that matches, 
So this cannot be um, one that can be used in a combination. The next highest number is a 10, and I'm not finding anything over here that matches that. The next highest number is a 5, there's nothing. Uh, $3.33, there's nothing of good Y that matches that. So the next highest here is this $2, and the $2 of good X, that marginal utility per dollar actually works for either three or four units of good Y. So the next thing that I need to do then is look at these marginal utilities per dollar of two and figure out how I can spend my $13. If I'm going to buy three units of good X at $3 each, that's three times three, I've already spent $9 of my uh, money. So that means I have $4 left. Well, if I buy three units of good Y at a dollar each, that means then that nine plus three dollars is twelve, and I haven't satisfied my budget constraint. So I have this one here that has a marginal utility per dollar of two. So if I buy three units of good three at three dollars, that's nine dollars. Four units of good Y at a dollar, and that's thirteen dollars. So I've not only met the ratios, but I've also satisfied my budget constraint. And that would be the combination then for the amount of goods that are sold. It would be three units of good Y, sorry, it would be three units of good X and four units of good Y. Now the other thing to look at here is the optimal consumption rule. With these problems, instead of getting a budget constraint where you have to spend um, the person's income, what you're having to do here is figure out a way to make these ratios meet one another. And you're not given a table like in the previous one. Instead, it's more like um, a word problem. So an example that you might be confronted with is that they'll tell you the marginal utility of X is 40 and the price of X is 10. The marginal utility of Y is 20 and the price of Y is 4. And so with that, the first thing that you need to do is you need to set this problem up and you need to look at the, um, what the ratios are. And so 40 over the $10 is going to be 4 and 20 over the $4 is going to be 5. And what you can see here is that 4 does not equal 5. And so if I were looking at these ratios over here, you could place the 4 and the 5 along this axis if it helps you to see what you need to do with regard to the quantities. Because the ultimate part of the question would be then, should you purchase more or less of X and Y in order to make the ratios equal one another? So for X, if I have a ratio of 4, my price is constant. I can't change it. The only thing I can do here is change the marginal utility. And so if I need it to equal this ratio of 5, I need this marginal utility to go from 40 to 50. And so think about the marginal utilities over here. If my marginal utilities go up, that means that the quantity goes down. And so if I want to make this 4 become a ratio of 5, which means I need this marginal utility to change to 50, I need to consume less of good X. The other way you could answer it is what are you going to do with Y? If I have a marginal utility of X, price of X ratio of 4, what do I need to do to this 5 to make it smaller so that it can become a 4? And again, the price is constant, so I need this 20 to become a 16. Well, if I'm at a 20, and it, which would be up here, and I need it to drop down to 16, that means then that I can consume more of the good because the marginal utility is going to be lower, which means the quantity will be higher. And so one of the rules to remember is that if the marginal utility of X over the price of X is less than the marginal utility of Y over the price of Y, you have to buy more of Y. Or if the marginal utility of X over the price of X is greater than the marginal utility of Y over the price of Y, then you would buy more of X. 
And so when you're looking at these, you set the ratios up to one another, and then you figure out, what am I going to do with X? Am I going to buy more of it or less of it in order to get to that 5? And then same thing for the Y. Am I going to buy more or less of it in order to be able to make those ratios meet? And one of the things I always suggest is to draw a demand curve whenever you're looking at these problems. And that way you can think about what I'm doing with regard to the quantities.